is buzzing, my mind goes round and round. Everything's overwhelming, well, that's what I have found. It's a scary world out there, and I don't know what to do. I find myself worrying even when I'm in the loo. It all starts in my brain. Steaming through my head like a chug-a-choo-choo train. I need to read Romans 12, verse 2. God, change my thinking, show me how to live for you. My cranium is buzzing, my mind goes round and round. Everything is awesome, well, that's what I found. A beautiful world out there filled with people that I love. Life is a gift given from a God above. And it all starts in my brain. Starts in his brain. It keeps me looking forward with the thought that it contains. So I believe in Romans 12, verse 2. God, change my thinking, show me how to live for you. My craniums are buzzing, our minds go round and round. We're transforming our thinking with this verse that we have found. The thoughts that used to bother us don't bother us no more. We simply change the way we think and show them to the door. Trumpet solo! Really? Uh, Ned, I thought you practiced. Oh, hey, Lucy. Where are you going? Oh, hi, Ned. I'm going to my friend's birthday party. It's going to be a pool party. It's going to be so fun. Wow, pool party. Awesome. But wait a minute. Didn't we agree to go to the Bible study tonight with Teacher Cat at Kids Hub? Oh, man. I totally forgot, Ned. But I can't miss out on this party. It's going to be the party of the year. I'm going to be missing out if I don't go. Everyone's going to be there, Ned. Okay, Lucy, but I'm telling you, you're going to miss out more if you don't come with me today. And besides, you promised. I'll go next time. I promise. Hi, kids, and welcome to Kids Hub Online. So we just finished our sermon series on Joshua. And just to remind everyone, Joshua was the one whom God chose to lead the Israelites into their promised land. And we learned that God truly is a promise keeper. After all those years of wandering in the desert, the Israelites finally found a home in Canaan. And today, we're diving into a new series called Judges and Kings. We're going to start off with Judges. We're going to learn who they are and why God sent them years after Joshua died. So let's begin by watching this video. The book of Judges was most likely written by the prophet Samuel between 1045 and 1000 BC, chronicling the 480 year span following Israel's conquest of Canaan. After the death of Joshua and those that served alongside him, the Israelites were settled in Canaan. But some Canaanites remained in the land and the Israelites began to adopt their corrupt religious practices. Despite being called by God to be a holy people, set apart for His glory, they chose to embrace the culture around them by worshiping idols, sacrificing their own children, murdering their fellow Israelites, and rejecting God's call to be different. By sinning against God, the Israelites are prone to oppression from the Canaanites, which leads them to repent and beg God for deliverance. God responds by raising up judges, or political leaders, from amongst the tribes to bring peace to the conflicts. These judges ranged from pretty good, to okay, to bad, to worse, acting in selfish and ungodly ways, but still being used in God's faithfulness to protect and deliver His people. Seeing how the nation of Israel lives, it is clear that they've forgotten the character of God and the conditions of His covenant with them. And yet, despite everyone choosing to do what was right in their own eyes, God upholds His covenant with Abraham to deliver His people. Hey kids, and welcome to Pop Quiz! Are you guys ready to answer some true or false questions? Let's see who's going to get it all right. So let's jump in. Question number one, true or false? 
The book of Judges was written before Joshua died. False! The book of Judges came after Joshua died. Question number two. True or false? The Israelites, being God's chosen people, really made a big influence on the Canaanites. They influenced them to be followers of God as well and get rid of all the bad practices they had. Answer is false again! It was actually the other way around. The Israelites were the ones influenced by the Canaanites to worship their idols and do the things that they practiced that were super against God's command. The generation that came after Joshua forgot all about God's teachings and did not remain faithful to him. They forgot all about what God has done for them in Egypt. Question number three. God chose judges to help the Israelites out. The answer is true! God appointed several judges to help deliver the Israelites from their enemies. I heard we'll be learning more about these judges as we dig deeper in this sermon series. How exciting! That's it for today's episode of Pop Quiz! I hope you guys did awesome as always. Until next time, bye! It was horrible, Ned. I felt guilty the entire time. And everyone was just too loud and a fight even broke out because two guys couldn't agree between Minecraft or Roblox. So silly. Oh, Lucy, that sucks. You know, your story is so similar to what Teacher Kat shared today. She talked about how the Israelites were pressured or influenced by the Canaanites. And then what happened? Well, there's a reason why God didn't want them with the Canaanites. They worshipped idols and did a lot of things that were against God's teachings. But the Israelites were stubborn, so they got punished for it, of course. Oh, but hey, don't think I'm comparing your friends to the Canaanites. I'm just saying that you should be a better influence to your friends, since you have a God in your heart and all. You're right, Ned. I shouldn't have skipped on my commitments with Teacher Cat and missed out on God's teaching today. I should have prioritized him over a party. I feel horrible. Don't feel so bad. It's not like God left the Israelites alone. He still helped them out. And as for you, you can still do the right thing. Admitting to your mistake is the first step. You know, this reminds me of a great verse from Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so they will praise your Father in heaven. What a great verse to remember. Let me try. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. In the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so that they will praise your Father in heaven. Thanks for this, Ned. Truly, I need to remember to remain in my faith and be the light to my friends so they may know the goodness of God too. You're welcome, Lucy. Hey, you can still catch some of Teacher Cat's lessons. You want to tune back with me and watch Kids Up? Sure, Ned. That sounds like a great idea. Hi, kids. I hope you learned a lot from our lesson today. As followers of Jesus, we need to remember to always stand firm in our faith. What do I mean by this? Well, there are a lot of things around us that can easily tempt us to do things that we know God wouldn't want us to do. For example, perhaps you're out with some people and about to have lunch. Now, if these people don't usually pray before a meal, would you also skip on thanking God for your food? Or maybe it's time to go to church, but your friends invited you to play. Would you choose that instead? Let's always remember to be the light of who God is to other people. Don't let it be the other way around where you're the one who gets influenced to do things that God wouldn't be so happy with. Now it's not easy to do, but the great thing about all of this is that God is always there to help us. And that's exactly what He did with the Israelites too. Despite the many mistakes that the Israelites made, God kept sending help through different judges whom God used to deliver them from their enemies and remind them of God's goodness. So kids, 
continue to tune in as we study how God remained faithful to the Israelites by sending judges. Now before I end, let me lead you all in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for our lesson today and for reminding us to not be influenced by this world, but rather to be the influence of your goodness to others. We love you, Lord, and we pray for your guidance in how to live life always. Thank you for always being there for us, always ready to rescue us despite our mistakes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>